All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today's a rainy day, so I decided we're gonna be inside brewing some beer. Today, we're gonna be making a Cascade-only American Pale Ale. Something like six out of the last eight brews that I have done have uh, almost entirely been above 7.5% ABV, and I'm getting kind of tired of drinking lots and lots of strong beer, so I'm gonna dial it back down for this one, and we're gonna shoot for a five-ish percent beer. American Pale Ale is an awesome summer beer. Uh, it's not too hoppy, and it's not too too strong and it, it's kind of like a less hoppy cousin of the American IPA. Uh, so you're gonna have a whole bunch of those same hop forward notes and you're gonna have a whole lot of hop character in the beer but it's not going to be uh, very bitter and it's not going to be as as hop forward as an American IPA. In fact the American Pale Ale uh, has less in common with the American IPA than it does with uh, British Pale Ales believe it or not. So. Uh, typically, you're going to see them be a little bit maltier. Um, they're going to have potentially a little bit more variety in the malt bill. Um, but I think I'm just going to kind of go for something that's going to be more like a session IPA. Basically, I'm going for something that's a little more low ABV, uh, high drinkability. It's going to hopefully have a little bit more hop expression and character than your typical American golden or blonde ale. Uh, really trying to keep this one on the pale side of things. Uh, and just I'm hoping for a nice, bright... Uh, citrusy, enjoyable, sessionable uh, summer drinking beer. So hopefully we can get that today. I'm using Cascade hops entirely because uh, Cascade is just basically an awesome hop for this type of project. Uh, it's, uh, it's a rather medium to low alpha acid hop, so it's not super strong. You can use a lot of it and not uh, really overdo it. It's not you know extremely bitter when you use it in quantity. It also has a nice, really expressive floral and citrus character, uh, which will hopefully pair nicely with uh, the very simple malt bill that I have here. So hopefully it comes out tasting nice and bright, citrusy and uh, enjoyable without being uh, overly bitter. All in all, this should be a relatively easy beer to brew um, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get into the recipe. So we're gonna go with 10 pounds of Maris Otter as the base malt. Uh, Maris Otter is probably my favorite base malt of all time. It's extremely flavorful. It has a very satisfying and full flavor. Typically it's kind of like a bready, doughy kind of base malt flavor. Uh, and I'm opting for Maris Otter over two row because in the pale ale you're really shooting for a balanced beer. So having a decent amount of malt flavor to back up your hop flavor is pretty important. So we're gonna pair that Maris Otter with one pound of Vienna malt for just a little touch of color and a little touch of slightly more uh, dough kind of flavor. So hops here, it's all Cascade and we have a lot of Cascade. Um, my Cascade is all entirely 6.4% alpha acids. So I'm adding one ounce at 60 minutes to bitter, and then one ounce at 20 minutes, one ounce at 15 minutes, one ounce at 10 minutes, and then two ounces at zero minutes. And then I'm reserving two more ounces to dry hop with. Now, one might think, holy crap, that's eight ounces of hops going into an American Pale Ale. Are you sure it's an American Pale Ale? Yes, because my IBUs are actually only 48. And the IBU to gravity points ratio is actually just still under one. So despite it sounding like an IPA, it's gonna have hopefully a ton of flavor and aroma, but not be overly bitter and still have a lot of room left over for that malt to balance things out. All wrapped up in a rather low ABV package. So for yeast, we're gonna be using one package of rehydrated US05 dry ale yeast, um, because that is what I have on hand for American ales. So for water, I'm uh, using a profile that is going to kind of accentuate the hops a little bit. So we have a ratio of sulfate to chloride of 2.3 to one, and this is gonna help kind of add a little bit of a uh, perception of a drier finish, but also it's gonna bring forward those hops a little bit and uh, kind of brighten up the flavor. And we're also gonna be keeping a relatively high amount of calcium and magnesium in the profile uh, for yeast health and for fermentation quality. So my profile is 63 parts per million of calcium, 28 parts per million of magnesium, 65 parts per million of sodium, 233 parts per million of sulfate, 100 parts per million of chloride, and 36 parts per million of bicarbonate. And I'm adding 10 grams of gypsum and 10 grams of epsom to my water, um, that is for my mash and my sparge water, uh, to get that profile. So the bottom line is, if you're using city water like I am, uh, your water profile is going to probably be different in pretty much every single case. Uh, so just keep that in mind and use a tool of your choosing to build your own water profile for this beer. And basically if you want to brew the beer the way that I did, um, then the profile that I'm providing here is basically just a reference so that you know how it worked for me. 
All right, last but not least, we are gonna be mashing with a single infusion mash at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. That should keep the body of the beer relatively light and hopefully we'll cut down on the amount of uh, residual sugars that are left over after fermentation, keeping the beer from being overly sweet. All right, so my mash water is all ready to go. It's up the temp and has all of the salts dissolved in it. So we're gonna go ahead and move on over there to dough in. I use this recirculating system that I built uh, last year sometime uh, just to kind of maintain consistency with my mash temperatures, but you don't need something like this to make a beer like this. You can do just fine. I want to say that with an igloo cooler or a brew in the bag setup because I've done that stuff before too and made fine beer with it. Uh, just follow the mash temp guidelines and you'll be okay. All right, so our, our mash is up now, so uh, we're gonna start collecting our wort. And the way that I do that is just draining from this kettle into this kettle here. Usually gets us about six or so gallons from our first runnings, and then I'll use the sparge water that I've got heated up on the side here, and we'll sparge. Uh, we'll just do a batch sparge like I usually do. And then whatever comes out is going to be the second runnings, and usually that's enough to get us up to the very top of this kettle, which is a total of eight gallons. And now eight gallons is about my ideal pre-boil volume for my system, so uh, that's what we're targeting. Hopefully that works out pretty well. Once I have all eight gallons collected in here, I'll remove the bag that I have here and I'll pump the wort from this kettle back into this kettle and then we'll get ready for the boil. All right, so here is our uh, pre-boil gravity reading, and uh, it's about 9.6 bricks, uh, which converts to a reading of about 1038, which is a single gravity point higher than our target. So that's a pretty good start. All right, so we've reached our boil now, and uh, we're gonna add our first uh, hop addition here at 60 minutes, which is just a one ounce of Cascade. So that's going in now. And we'll come back in 40 minutes to add our next hop addition. All right, so here's our 20 minute hop addition, which is just one more ounce of Cascade. And uh, we'll wait for another five minutes and come back and uh, add another ounce. All right, so now it's time for our 15 minute hop addition, which is another ounce of Cascade going in right now. We'll come back in five minutes. All right, so it is now 10 minutes from the end of the boil, so we gotta add our uh, 10 minute hop addition, one more ounce of Cascade. I'm also gonna add a Whirlflock tablet, and I'm also gonna add uh, two and a half teaspoons of yeast nutrient. All right, so the other thing we're gonna do around the 10 minute mark is uh, make sure that we sanitize the inside of this chiller by recirculating boiling wort through it for the last 10 minutes. Um, that is something I highly recommend you do with whatever chilling setup that you have. Uh, just assuming, of course, that it's clean on the inside, that's just gonna help ensure that you don't contaminate your beer as you cool it down. All right, so uh, we have now hit the end of our boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off all the heat sources. And uh, we're gonna start chilling. All right, so while we're chilling, it's also a zero minute hop addition. 
So that's the two ounces of Cascade that I just tossed in there. And now we'll chill as normal. And the other two ounces of Cascade, we're going to reserve for a dry hop. So I'm going to chill until we get down to about 65 Fahrenheit. Um, and at that point, I will go ahead and pitch yeast. All right, so we've uh, cooled off quite nicely now. So it's time to transfer over into the uh, fermenter bucket here. So first of all, we're going to make sure that we aerate this quite heavily by splashing it into the bucket and to generate a lot of bubbles. Um, yeast is going to need oxygen to reproduce quickly and ensure a healthy fermentation. So this is about the best method you can get short of actually adding uh, oxygen directly with an oxygen wand. Uh, so fermentation for the beer should be relatively simple and straightforward. Um, it is a standard ale fermentation, so 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit for basically 10 to 14 days. However, there's going to be a dry hopping addition here, so uh, what I've decided to do is the same exact method that I used for my Citra Double IPA. Um, you can see the fermenter lid sitting over here with a hop bag on it. I've already added those hops in there, and I have a stainless steel metal object inside the hop bag. And on the other end of the uh, fermenter lid is a whole bunch of neodymium rare earth magnets, which are very strong magnets. So the idea is uh, once we pitch the yeast tonight, we cap it up and leave the dry hop bag on top of that. And then uh, once I'm ready to dry hop, I will just pull the magnet off and that will drop the bag into the beer as it's fermenting. So that way I don't ever have to open up the fermenter. Um, also, in theory, there should be enough CO2 kicked off by the active fermentation that will purge the headspace uh, in the fermenter of any oxygen, and that should prevent the hops from staling over the first uh, a couple hours that they are exposed to the oxygen that's in the fermenter. So anyway, basically, yeah, that's it. Ferment for uh, 10 to 14 days at 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, dry hopping uh, for the last seven days. All right, so here's my rehydrated packet of US05. Uh, so we're just gonna be able to pitch that directly in right now. And there we go. Uh, so basically, I should just be able to cap this up like so. And then, once it's time to dry hop, just rip this magnet stack off and it should drop the bag right into the wort. All right, so our uh, original gravity sample came in at about 11.7 bricks, which translates to about 1046 for an OG, which is uh, slightly low, actually, three points low. Uh, but that's okay, should be a pretty nice, sessionable beer at the end of this. So we ended up with a surprisingly low final gravity of about 10.04. Uh, so it's done, and uh, it's going into the keg tonight. We're gonna burst carbonate, and we'll see how it is in a couple days. So fermentation went off really without a hitch. Uh, I was actually shooting for a final gravity of 1010, and we went way past that, as you could see. So uh, it actually worked out um, more completely than intended. Uh, and initially I was like, okay, this is probably gonna be a little too dry, but it actually works out pretty well in this beer style. Um, I actually think the drier final gravity resulted in a surprisingly crisper, tastier beer. Um, it actually really kind of welcomed the way that that went out in this beer style and the way that it manifests itself. So fermentation was actually very fast too uh, for using dry yeast. Uh, it only took me eight days to reach final gravity and then I actually kegged it on the ninth day. Uh, and then carved it up and it's been just awesome ever since. Super fresh tasting beer, which is always nice when you have a hop forward beer. I think the dry hopping section was only like five or six days though as a result of that. And uh, I think that was actually a little bit less time than I was planning on during the recipe formulation, but it still came out with a lot of great aroma and I think it was just enough time. Without further ado, I'm gonna make use of what daylight is left and we're gonna pour this thing and go outside on the porch and talk about it. All right, so it's called Cold Brook Ale after a uh, stream that's near where I live. And uh, it is a 5.5% beer with about 48 IBUs. All right, so uh, the appearance of the beer is a really nice kind of straw color. There's a significant amount of condensation out here because it's extremely humid today. Um, so that's probably causing the glass to be a little bit hazy. Uh, but trust me, the beer is uh, at like 95% clear. There's a little bit of haze from uh, hop polyphenols from dry hopping, but that's about it. And I think it's going to continue to trend towards clearing up over the next couple days. Uh, the head on it pours as a really nice, quite beautiful um, 
white, very, very, very fine bubbled head that actually sticks around for quite a bit of time. As you can see, it has a really nice structure, uh, which is actually pretty awesome. I don't know what I've done to make this beer stand out from some of the others that I've brewed, um, but this one has a significantly nicer head than most of the ones that I make. And I think you'll see that over the course of this tasting section, it's gonna actually maintain a really nice layer on the surface. All right, so uh, for aroma, I think the aroma benefited quite a bit from the dry hop. Uh, it's got a really nice, pleasant citrus grapefruit kind of thing uh, going on. Uh, definitely some grapefruit, but also uh, I think there's a kind of like I, there's an orange family type of citrus note there. Um, and there's a little bit of sweet malt. So it's, it's actually a pretty nice, uh, pleasing aroma. Nothing too overpowering. You know, it's not crazy strong like an IPA, for example. And now towards mouthfeel. So as you could tell from the final gravity clip, um, the final gravity end is very low, making this beer quite dry. And it definitely tastes as such. Um, it really is very, very light bodied beer, um, but it has a lot of flavor to back it up. So I'm just gonna say it's a light to medium light, I think. It, uh, it's definitely well carbonated. I think I might've overdone it just a slight amount. It's definitely not as spritzy as the Belgian Golden Strong Ale that I, j I made earlier, um, but I think it probably yeah, it's like on the very edge of, I think, what is uh, acceptable for it. But yeah, it really, really goes down very easy. Extremely drinkable beer. Um, really nice, I think, overall uh, drinking experience. Um, so then, yeah, we'll go into flavor now. So it has um, a really good malt backbone. It's not strong. You know, it's not bready, it's not significant, but it's flavorful. Um, it's not sweet either. It's kind of grainy, but not in a, uh, a husky or tannic way, I don't think. It's just got a little bit more depth of, of malt character, I think, to it than if I had used like American Two Row or maybe even Pilsner Malt. Pilsner Malt probably would have left a little bit more of a honey-like character, but this one's definitely got a little more interesting uh, character to it, I think, than just plain old Two Row. As far as the hops go, uh, it really is very, very, very tasty. Um, I get a really nice, pleasant, mild grapefruit out of it. And one thing I love about a pale ale versus an IPA is that the hops are gentle, but still interesting. Um, and I think that really worked out well in this beer. It's not overpoweringly bitter at all. I don't think the hops come through as being bitter, really. It's not sweet, it's just dry, um, but the hops are, are coming through brightly and uh, in a balanced way, not as a uh, bitter, you know, in your face kind of way as you would for, you know, most IPAs. Um, and I'm, I'm a hop head, so, you know, I do have a really reasonable tolerance for them, but I still pick them up. Uh, I still pick up the flavor quite nicely in this. Um, the Cascade is it's coming through as a nice mix of grapefruit, tangerine, and a little kind of um, like herbal piney type note, not really significantly piney but like there's a little bit of it there um the one thing that is kind of unfortunately rather noticeable in this is grassy flavor it's like um not like a lawnmower grassy but like i don't know kind of like a an herbal grassy note um it actually doesn't taste bad in this uh, but I think it's from dry hopping. I think it's just from the eight ounces of hops that I threw in. And like, that's a lot of vegetal material that went into the beer. Uh, so that is what causes grassy flavors to occur. And I think that's really what happened here. You know, there's not a lot of malt flavor for it to hide behind. So uh, it kind of became noticeable. Um, but that being said, I don't think it really tastes bad. Um, I think it technically is an off flavor, you know, but uh, I, I find myself kind of welcoming it. It's weirdly refreshing, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry if the video is getting kind of dark. I'm like losing daylight here, so I'm trying to adjust my camera settings on the fly, uh, but it's just nice out and I really want to be outside right now, so sorry if the video quality sucks. Anyway, I'm really happy with the beer. Um, it is a super crushable summer beer, and at 5.5%, it is a welcome break from all of the other beers that I've been brewing lately, which have all been over seven and a half percent. So um, just, it is nice to have a light bodied, easy drinking, tasty beer on tap. And it's definitely sessionable, so it goes down real easy. And um, it's definitely 
a lot of fun to drink. Sometimes there's an awesome beauty in simple things and uh, simple recipes. And this is definitely one of those very simple recipes. I think um, the simplicity of the recipe kept this beer quite nice. Um, definitely very easy to make if you happen to have eight ounces of Cascade on your hands. Uh, definitely a good one I think that I would remake easily. Um, I'm very pleased with the beer and how it came out uh, with the exception of the uh, grassy flavor. I think it's pretty much everything I wanted out of a pale ale right now, especially a single hop pale ale. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nine out of 10. It's very good beer. Um, it is pretty much everything I wanted. And I think it's very approachable for pretty much anybody who uh, likes beer in general, um, because it's not overly hoppy. And it is pretty much exactly what I designed the recipe to be. Um, I think it just goes to show why Cascade is such an awesome hop. I mean, it's been around forever. <laughs> um, ever since the craft beer industry really took off, Cascade has always been there. And um, it is still a popular, popular hop today. And that is for a good reason. You know, it's multi-purpose. You can use it in bittering all the way through dry hop and have great results with it. And uh, it's not too aggressive and it's a very approachable, nice flavor that blends well with some good base malt. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with the beer. I don't think it's gonna stick around for too long though. All right, so that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I'm not gonna make it too much longer because I'm literally running out of daylight. But if you don't mind hitting that like button, if you liked watching the video, if you like watching me do this stuff on a regular basis, hit the subscribe button. I typically will kick out graded glass videos like this every two to three weeks. But if you want more frequent updates, check out my Instagram down below. It's at the apartment brewer on Instagram and I'll post there roughly every one to two days. Comment down below if you wanna talk about anything about the beer or the brewing process, uh, the ingredients involved. I love to talk with everybody. I do read every single comment and I will respond to as many as I can. Uh, within a reasonable amount of time. And uh, last but not least, if you wanna brew the beer itself, uh, there's a recipe in the description box for how I brewed it. So check that out if you wanna do that. Let me know if you do brew the beer. It'd be pretty cool. Sometimes you guys do that and it's awesome. Also in the description box, there's a complete list of all the equipment that I use to make beer with and links to Amazon where you could purchase it for yourself if you wish to. So um, if you do happen to be in the market for some home brewing equipment and you click on one of those links and actually purchase something, uh, then I do earn a very small commission, but it's at no additional cost to you and it just goes right back into uh, supporting this channel. So I do appreciate it. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to go finish off the rest of this very tasty, drinkable beer, and I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.